let's wrap up this week by talking about the Teen Titans by Jeff Johns Omnibus. This is the 2022 edition. Let's get started. So we are back with another 2022 version of a DC Omnibus. This one here happens to be one of the thickest Omnis that was released at the time and to this day still is one of the biggest Omnibus. This one is 1,440 pages, but it's all the Teen Titans that Jeff Johns wrote during his time on that book. Uh, so here's the cover. Again, DC doesn't really do variant covers or direct market covers, uh, but we have by Jeff Johns and also down here, Mike McCone, Tony S. Daniel, and Tom Grumet, who is no stranger to drawing Teen Titans. Uh, here is the big spine Teen Titans by Jeff Johns Omnibus. And in the back, kids shouldn't wear costumes, a little blurb from IGN, uh, the ISBN down there. The book is $150 retail in this piece right here from Mike McCone. Uh, before we look under the dust jacket, though, I did want to compare it to my 2013 printing, which is when the original printing came out. Um, the one thing you're going to notice is the logo. The DC logo has changed. The blurb is still the same. The Teen Titans, the colors look identical. Even the font they're using for the names are identical. But the DC logo is what's changed. Every few years, they change the logos. So in case you're looking for the newer printing, remember to look for that right there instead of this logo, which makes me mad because I actually custom bound my books. So if I decide to keep the new printing, that just won't make any sense on the shelf. It's got the old DC logo. People will know these are custom bound. All right, yes, of course, people are gonna know these are custom bound because of the size. Uh, but let's focus back on the comparison between these two. Back here, looks identical. The ISBN is a little bit smaller, so you get a little more of Beast Boy's image there. Uh, but even the font they are using is the same, and also the design that they're using, that grid design they're using for the back and the spine. Under the dust jacket is also different. So it seems like they're doing a Marvel thing now, which where Marvel used to do just the fake leather look to their books under the dust jacket. DC is now, like Marvel, printing images under the dust jacket. So again, the 2022 version has this image by Mike McCone. Whereas the 2013 version just has a black board. And there we have Teen Titans embossed as well as on the spine with the DC logo and the Teen Titans logo back here. It's all embossed. But here we have this piece on the board. Now, if you're asking, wait a minute, Tara, what's she doing there? Everything is explained within here. I'm not going to give spoilers away. I am going to talk about the setup of the book, though, and how it all came to be, and talk about some of the stories that are in here, because this is one of my favorite runs by Jeff Johns. And, of course, talk about the build and do a comparison uh, to the internal artwork to the original book in a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's get this book open. We have some black end pages there. This awesome image, this is when Tony S. Daniel took over the book of the new Teen Titans. And we have another Mike McCone image, very iconic image, of course. Uh, here's all the credits. Most of this written, of course, by Jeff Johns, uh, Adam Beechin. Always love that dude's name, Adam Beechin. Uh, ben Rabb, Bill Willingham, Judd Winnick, Marf Wolfman, and then all the artists that worked on the book. And primarily, that's Mike McCone, Tony S. Daniel, and then Tom Grumet did some fill-in work. The names you're not going to see in here are Gail Simone and Rob Liefeld. That's right, because there are some issues that are skipped here. They took the identical mapping that they had with the first printing, and all they did was put it into a new book. Here's an introduction right here. Teenage Superheroes Rule, and this is written by Jeff Johns. All the way in 2003, so that introduction is almost 20 years old. They didn't bother reaching out and asking him for a new one. But hey, what are you going to do? Then we have this image right here of the Outsiders and the Teen Titans from the... I think this is from the Secret Files 2003. Oh, I do love this, though. This is... We're used to this now. This is like a what people call a virgin cover. I call it a textless cover. Uh, but in the back, we're used to DC just not putting any information. What cover you're... Or what issue you're on. Or the creators 
Yes, they used to do that. See, but right here tells you where this image is from and who the creators are. So this one is written by Jeff Johns and Judd Winnick and Ivan Reyes and Carlos Barberi are the artwork. So this is in the aftermath of the Young Justice Teen Titans graduation day where something huge happens. Uh, but before we talk about that, let's talk about what the actual content of the book is. So this omnibus does contain Teen Titans 1 through 26 and the half issue, 29 through 46, and then material from issue number 50. It also includes Legends of the DC Universe number 2, Titan Secret Files number 2, Teen Titans Outsider Secret Files 2003, which is how it's kicked off with this book, the aftermath, like I said. Uh, Beast Boy 1 through 4, which was actually written before this series in 1999. Teen Titans Legion of Superheroes special number 1. Outsiders 24 through 25. Robin 147 uh, to 148. And Infinite Crisis 5 and 6, as well as Teen Titans Annual number 1. So that is what's collected in this book. 1,440 pages. This thing is a beast. I'm not going to make a joke about a Beast Boy. No dad jokes today. Uh, but this has been released previously in trade paperbacks. I will say this about the trade paperbacks. And I'm not talking about the Teen Titans by Jeff Johns trade paperbacks. I'm talking about the Teen Titans trade paperbacks. Those are more complete. But even those don't collect the damn issues 27 and 28. Now, some people are like, who cares, man? That was written by Gail Simone. They weren't that great. It featured Hawk and Dove, and it had artwork by Rob Liefeld. I cared. And I think a few others cared because it's just skipping issues for no reason. I know they weren't written by him, but there are a few issues in here that also weren't written by him, particularly the crossover issues. But that battle has come and gone. Uh, they don't seem to ever want to reprint those issues. That's why I put them in my custom bound. As a matter of fact, I think my volume two kicks off with those two issues. Look, I made my own table of contents there. Oh no, it kicks off with year one. And then it has those issues in here. Look at that. Yeah, so obviously I cared enough to track down those issues and put them into my book, my custom bound volume two. Um, but I, yes, it doesn't take away from the story if you're missing those issues, honestly. The big important parts that happen and that you need to read all take place in this omnibus. So I talked about Young Justice and Teen Titans Graduation Day. What exactly is that? Well, back in 2001 slash 2002, DC decided to rehaul their Young Characters line. Uh, we had a title by um, Peter David known as Young Justice, and then we also had the Titans uh, series. And they wanted to kind of give it a rehaul. They wanted to take a few chances on those titles by having some new writers step in. So Judd Winnick, uh, the gentleman who wrote Green Arrow, uh, he wrote Green Lantern for a while. And I think some people probably know him from the real world, but I think we've gone beyond that. He took over the Titans book and it became known as The Outsiders. Uh, he did that with Tom Rainey. And Jeff Johns took over the Young Justice book, which became Teen Titans, and Mike McCone helped him on artwork. But in order to do that, in order to rebrand him as a brand new number one, they had this three-issue event called the Graduation Day. And a few characters from those older stories got killed off in there. As a matter of fact, <laughs> one of the big important characters that gets killed off in there makes a big return in this particular omnibus uh, so there's not really a recap page as to what happened before this it's just the aftermath and i know it's already 1440 pages but damn i wish this printing would have collected graduation day who knows maybe when we get some young justice omnis we'll finally get it so here we have a brand new team uh it's a team of characters that have worked together before and some that haven't uh, so we have now Robin and Superboy. Now this is the Tim Drake Robin and it's Connor Superboy. But the other important thing to keep in mind is that this is pre-52, the new 52 era of DC Comics when they changed up the origin of Tim Drake. Oh, that That's a, that's a whole mess that they did. Um, and Connor kind of just blinked out of existence. So that is the important thing to note, that this all happened before Flashpoint and that New 52 era. We also get Cassie Wonder Girl. 
Uh, Beast Boy joins the team. Starfire, who is a veteran Teen Titan by then. Meanwhile, her man crush, her man candy, was over in the Outsiders, Nightwing. And we have Impulse, who will now be known as Kid Flash when he changes his costume. Here is the Hall of the Fallen Heroes. Here are all the characters that have died, not just in the graduation day, but in previous events. And of course, probably one of the most recognizable ones is Terra there. Uh, Jericho right next to her. But we do have the return of Deathstroke right there. I love this. The, the, this series was so damn good. And, you know, people were talking about it. People were talking about this series like they were talking about X-Men at the comic book store. And, man, did it ever meet the expectations that I wanted. This is your teen drama mixed with superheroics, mixed with, like, and you throw in some Jeff Johns badass moments in here, and there are several of those. Oh, man, what an awesome series. Because it's also about friends, though. Like, you know, these kids are bonding over the loss of their comrades. They're, they're bonding over coming together and deciding to be not just sidekicks, but heroes again, which is the whole basis of what Teen Titans was. And yes, Mike McCone drew a lot of freaking issues for this book. I say that when I get to the Tom Grumet page, then I, yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, but Tom Grumet, who had drawn Teen Titans when back when uh, Marf Wolfman was still writing the book, just called New Teen Titans, he gets uh, some fill-in issues here. And then we get, I believe that's Ivan Race. And we get the return of some characters. So you'll see Raven show up in here. She'll end up joining the team. And then some members decide to leave and join the Outsiders. Like Starfire decides she needs to take off and join the, yeah, the Outsiders. Uh, we also get the return of a few other characters and some amazing surprises. Uh, so if you're a fan of like the older Teen Titans books, the, the new Teen Titans... This is great just because of that, because a lot of characters return. This is the interesting thing that they collect in here, and I'm surprised they put it, like, after the first couple of story arcs, and that's Beast Boy. It's the Beast Boy series, uh, one through four, that is collected in here. She was one of my favorite new characters, Rose, that appeared in here. Uh, but this was written in 1999, so a few years before the beginning of the story, so I'm surprised that this wasn't at the beginning but I guess they wanted everything collected by Jeff Johns. It's just an interesting like, place to put this. I do believe this is Ryan Benjamin that does the artwork in this, if I'm not mistaken. And then we get back to Teen Titans. Now, if this is also the same placement that they had it in the trade paperbacks, the old school trade paperbacks. So I guess they didn't want to break the flow of the stories. Um, but here we have the story with the Legion of Superheroes right here. That is an awesome story, especially the one shot right there. Uh, artwork by Ivan Reyes. And then we have the Titans Tomorrow, which is, to me, one of the best, the very best story arcs in here that I don't hear people talk about. This This is probably my top 20 favorite DC stories. Uh, just because this is the path that these characters were heading at the time. Again, brought to you by Jeff Johns and Mike McCone. But this is an alternate future. Where some of these characters grew up to become the new Justice League. But they are sadistic and they are twisted is, of course, the big turn on that. And what drove them to go that way and what's going to help them. And what happens when these future characters later on show up in our present time to keep these kids from going into that dark path. I think it's one of the greatest DC stories. Uh, Arrowette, I believe she joins the team right here. Uh... We have a new Hawk and Dove that helped team up. And then during this time, of course, it helps set up the things that are known as Villains United. There's a badass moment in here uh, that took me by surprise, featuring Deathstroke, uh, that leads into the events of Villains United. Here's the crossovers with the Outsiders. It's finally time to get revenge. It's interesting because it's hard to talk about what happens here. Uh, but there's a particular character, like I said, that died and... <sighs> The cause of that death later joins the Outsiders, or joins it from the, from the beginning, but it's a, like a, a different version of that cause. Uh, all right, I'm speaking in riddles and codes there, but for those of you that have read it, you know what I'm talking about. By now, Tony S. Daniel has taken over the book, and I love the relationship between Connor and Cassie. I think it's one of the most beautiful 
innocent relationships to showcase, you know, love at that age. Oh, Red Hood makes an appearance here. Captain Carrot, you're going to see different Earth people show up through here, like Earth 2 characters. And that's all because, again, of the events of Infinite Crisis. All right, so let's get to the Infinite Crisis parts, how this is handled. So we have the issue of Superboy Prime fighting Superboy here. And it's a bigger expanded thing that you saw in the pages of Infinite Crisis. So it's here. I, to me, it's a lot better. I, I love that they included that in here. Uh, we have This is the crossover with Robin whenever they're trying to help Connor. And, of course, the annual right there that is perfectly placed. That's exactly where I would have put it. Uh, this is drawn partially by Ed Benes in here. And then, of course, you get the actual Infinite Crisis event taking place where the worlds are coming together and the, this very important part of Infinite Crisis. Uh, this is from issue number six. Now, God bless, I love this. You have Phil Jimenez on artwork here at the time. George Paytas does do a couple of pages from time to time through here. Jerry Ordway, of course, helping. Now, if you've not read Infinite Crisis, then I am definitely censoring that final page to talk about one year later. So in the aftermath of Infinite Crisis, every DC book went one year later. This is the cover here. Uh, it's the same creative team still. You have Jeff Johns writing it and Tony S. Danielle drawing it. But there were some huge shakeups to the lineups of the teams. Uh, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman going through the biggest changes. Uh, the team books went through some changes too. We had a brand new Justice League book. We had a brand new JSA book. It was just called Justice Society of America. And Teen Titans, what ended up happening to them is that they lost some team members and gained some new ones uh, to fill in the roster. Robin went through a big like psychological change too. Uh, what happened to him? He looks different, you know. Uh, there's a di there is a reason why he is wearing that outfit, that particular those particular colors. Uh, Ravager is now with the team. This is the crossover or the uh, Doom Patrol story arc. Uh, but then you get Teen Titans around the world, Teen Titans East. And I think these stories are just as good as they were when I read them when they first came out. Uh, you have Deathstroke leading some of them. You have Cassandra Kane because her book ended. Then we got Infinite Crisis. And then people are like, where's she been? Where's Cassandra Kane been? Well, she shows up in here. And it's not in the way that we wanted her to show up. That's all I will say. And then, of course, we skip issues. Jeff Johns ends up leaving the book. And I mean, skip issues 47 uh, through 49. And we, he does come back to write a couple of pages here in issue number 50, the Friday Night Lights uh, pages here. And sadly, he never returned to the book. He moved on from there, focused on JSA, uh, focused on bigger things, moved on to movies. And here's what the variant covers look like. And they weren't a lot of variant covers back then. Uh, some of the stuff from the Secret Files back here. Sketchbook. And odd, odd, but this is what they did with the first printing. They put ads in the back. It's so weird to see ads in an omnibus. You know, $150, 1,440 pages, and a few of those pages are ads. Just really weird. But it's identical to the first printing. Uh, as far as the binding of this book, it's a huge eye. But is it big enough? I think it does its job right it lays over really well towards the front and towards the back here you can see lays over i think it's nice like um i think dc i mentioned this in my superman death and return book that i think they finally figured out a way to keep a book from shutting and having that many pages because let me tell you as many times as i've read this this damn thing kept trying to shut on me like for the first few issues that I try to keep it open. No matter how many times I've stretched that spine, it doesn't matter. This is the way the book likes to do. Um, you know, to, when you get towards the middle, it's fine. And honestly, you know, I don't mind holding a book down. I had to do the same with my previous um, versions of Gotham Central. And my 52 is just a mess. So hopefully, I know the price of the... 52 reprint is $175, but I hope the binding at least is fixed. All right, let's do a comparison here with the way the book lays over uh, and the internal artwork. Okay, so original printing up at the top, the new printing here at the bottom with the new art on the board. 
and let's go ahead and crack these open same black and paper and then we have the same image here the one thing i noticed is that the colors are a little lighter here in the new printing just in this image alone and again just the tad bit lighter down here than the original printing up there but let's compare so let's talk about the way the book lays over the new printing that i love seeing that with this i have to hold it down a little bit or it'll just try to close on me this is the way spread pages are handled you can see a more of a gutter curve in the original printing than down here but again the colors are just a little bit lighter in the new printing a little darker here but as you get towards the middle it lays over good the, the original printing um still a little bit of a gutter loss right there because of the gutter curve but honestly i want to say the binding on this one is better in the new one and i think that's about the only difference a little lighter colors let's look towards the back all right towards the very back not a spread page but i did want to show how the books laid over the differences in them uh the one up at the top of course have to hold it down to keep the page open uh, the one at the bottom is laying over really nice. So, yeah. Final thoughts? I think a better binding in the new printing. That's that's one plus. One big plus for a lot of us. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check our sponsors. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. If you live in Europe and are interested in pre-ordering or purchasing Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comics shop in berlin germany they have the cheapest pre-order prices for marvel and dc big books within the eu flat shipping of 990 euro for eu countries extremely careful and sturdy packaging emails are answered within 24 hours and they have a superb selection of new releases and out-of-print books on their website just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles and for a limited time you can use the code near mint condition all one word at the checkout for free shipping to all eu countries with your first order Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. And that was the content, the build, and page count of this omnibus. And of course, the comparison to the 2020... And of course, the comparison to the original printing. Uh, let me know if you have any more comments down below, if you would love to see this line continue with a volume 2. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. More importantly, everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love. <laughs>